Now in a sixth year, Motor Classica once again attracted big crowds to Melbourne's Royal Exhibition buildings. This year's selection of cars and bikes were on the whole more modern than in previous years as the show continues to evolve. For Motor Classica's Paul Mathers, the incredible success of the show has even taken him by surprise. This is the sixth year of Motor Classica and if you'd have asked me in 2009 where we'd be now, I probably would have said, yeah, oh, maybe without a job. Um, maybe with a different job, certainly. Um, I, you know, to think that it's now six years on and, and there's no signs of it abating is, is really exciting. Um, it's testament not just to a really great team of people that I get to work with, but it's really a testament to the, the classic and collectible car community here in Australia and the way they have um, embraced this event over the last six years. Once again, several prestige manufacturers used Motor Classica to showcase new models and celebrate their motoring heritage. BMW had the 3-litre CSL Homage R, paying tribute to the incredible BMW CSL racers of the 1970s. The car's appearance at Motor Classica was only the second time it had ever been seen in public, and the fact that BMW would fly it all the way out to Australia for just a three-day event shows the increasing prestige of the show in the international motoring community. Bikes were also a major feature of this year's event, with a special display to celebrate MV Augusta. Also on display, this 1910 FN motorcycle that Tasmanian Ron Fellows used to travel halfway across the world to some of the most dangerous places on Earth. I started in Nepal and rode from Nepal, India, Pakistan, Iran, Turkey, Bulgaria, Romania, Hungary, Poland, Czech Republic, Austria, Luxembourg, Germany, um, and ended in Belgium where the machine was manufactured. Uh, probably the, the biggest fright was three youths put a shotgun to my head. So that was... was frightening in my yeah, attention. Yeah, yeah that, that definitely got me <laughs> going in there. Um, around the bottom of Afghanistan and Pakistan leading to the border of Iran, you have to have a mandatory police escort. And for 600 kilometres there, the police are on you all the time. Go faster, go faster, go faster. But of course, the FN, being 102 years old then, is not capable of doing that. So I was forever holding the convoy back. So tell us about the bike. What sort of bike is it? It's an FN made in 1910. Very advanced machine for its year. Four cylinders, shaft drive, even has a fuel gauge on the tank. So it led the world in, in technology at that time. Ron's book about his great adventure is No Room for Watermelons, and I asked him about the title. Well, the title's interesting because whenever you stop in those countries that I travelled through, the first thing that people do is they offer you a watermelon, some apricots, or some food. So, as you can see by the uh, cover there, there's no room for anything on the bike. Definitely not room for a watermelon. The success of Motor Classica may have surprised a lot of people, but there's no doubt now that it's formally taken its place. Five, four, three, two. The success of Motor Classica may have surprised a lot of people, but there's no doubt now that it's officially taken its place as one of the very best of its kind in the world, and yet another major international event that Melbourne should be very proud of.